you're eating clean, but you're not losing fat. Even though your diet plan might have worked before, now you're completely stuck in a tight range where you lose a pound or two one day and gain it back the next. Many of my clients had the same exact issue and they were mind blown that they were eating so healthy but not seeing the changes in the mirror. That's because there are a bunch of very common clean eating mistakes that can actually wind up making you gain weight and body fat instead of losing it. So in today's video, I'm gonna help you identify exactly what you're doing wrong so you can resume burning fat right away. The first common mistake is that you're eating the wrong types of healthy foods. These are foods that are advertised or marked on the packaging as healthy, but in reality, they're not beneficial for fat loss at all. In fact, many so-called healthy diet foods can easily make you fatter. A simple example that most of you are probably already aware of is trail mix bars and so-called weight loss friendly cereals. These kind of products will usually say 100% whole grain on the box or hard healthy or just 5 grams of net carbs. Unfortunately, none of these catchphrases mean much of anything at all. If a product has low net carbs, it just means that they subtracted the carbohydrates made up of fiber. But those carbohydrates still contain calories. And if it happens to be soluble fiber, it'll still at least partially get digested and absorbed by your body like regular carbs. Also in general, foods labeled as low carb can still be very fattening because they usually compensate for it by incorporating higher amounts of fat, especially in the form of added oils, natural sweeteners, or other calorically dense ingredients. The same goes for low fat products, which will usually have additional carbs added to satisfy your taste buds. Then we have terms like organic and vegan, which again, don't mean much at all in terms of the food's impact on your body fat. For example, one that's a no-brainer is eating organic mac and cheese, but there are far more tricky so-called healthy foods. For example, nuts and nut butters are included by nutritionists in so many meal plans, even though they're actually extremely high in calories and very bad at satisfying your appetite. Just one handful of almonds has about 160 calories, and it's very easy to eat four handfuls, taking in 640 calories while still feeling hungry afterwards. So this ties into our second mistake. You're going overboard with total calories. Believe it or not, if you eat too much very healthy food like fruit, salmon, and sweet potatoes, you can gain fat in the same way that you would if you ate too many Whoppers at McDonald's. You can't eat an endless amount of berries, chicken, and carrots. Even though they're all healthy, you can totally go over your total daily calorie count and gain body fat in the process. Of course, foods that have a low caloric density like chicken, vegetables, and strawberries are significantly more difficult to overeat because they're so good at filling your stomach. But it is definitely possible, especially if you're eating many meals per day and you're not tracking your calories. This is why if you're eating clean but not losing body fat, you should track your calories for at least a week or two to find out if you're going overboard. It's possible to even eat too much protein. All the excess protein will be converted into glucose through a process known as gluconeogenesis, and it can potentially be stored as fat just like sugar can. The other thing to keep in mind is that your calories need to be adjusted as you diet and lose fat because your metabolism will slow down. This is why you may have gotten results eating healthy in the beginning, but now the results are starting to level off. So if you're no longer burning fat with your diet and you're tracking your calories, you should subtract two to 300 calories from your daily intake and reevaluate a week later, at which point you could reduce by two to 300 again if necessary. You see, calorie calculators are far from having perfect accuracy. On top of that, food labels can be off by up to 20%. So if you're eating healthy, but you're not losing and not gaining any weight, most likely you're actually not in a calorie deficit, you're at maintenance, so adjust and try again. This brings us to the next issue, which is eating out all the time. When you go to most restaurants, it's very difficult to know exactly what you're getting in each of your meals. You see, restaurants are not concerned with your diet plan. Instead, they wanna make the food taste as good as possible so that you come back to eat there again. You think you're eating healthy by ordering something like salmon, rice, and vegetables, or chicken, garlic, broccoli, and roasted potatoes, but in reality, you have no idea how much oil, butter, and sweeteners were added to your meal. And many times it's enough to double the calories of something like salmon, rice, and veggies compared to the amount of calories you would have taken in by just making it at home. Oil and sugar taste very good, but it's also extremely calorically dense. They're so calorically dense that you can take low calorie weight loss friendly foods and make them highly fattening. For example, just one tablespoon of oil has about 120 calories and restaurants will almost always add multiple tablespoons of oil to your veggies, to your rice, and they'll even use a brush to cover salmon or chicken breast with a layer of oil. Sometimes they'll add breading to make the chicken taste crispier, or they might add a sweet glaze in a beautiful pattern to make your meal look more presentable 
understandable, but that glaze contains hundreds of extra empty calories. This is something that you want to be aware of, and it's also why you want to try your best to make your own meals whenever possible. This way you know exactly what's going into your meal. Another option is to stick primarily to restaurants that openly disclose nutrition and calorie data for each of their meals. For example, Chipotle, even though it's more of a fast food chain, it has many high protein healthy alternatives and all of the calorie data is displayed online, even as you customize your meal. Other popular fast food chains and convenience stores like Wawa and Quick Check have also followed the same approach of openly disclosing calories, but many restaurants and small chains still do not. Another common mistake is that you're overlooking and not counting certain foods and beverages that you're consuming. For example, if you add cream, coffee mate sweetener, or half and half to your coffee, you're probably not standing there measuring it with a tablespoon. Unfortunately, you can unknowingly add hundreds of empty calories this way. Same with a healthy salad that's virtually calorie free. If you add salad dressing and don't count it, your meal is gonna be much higher in sugar, fat, and overall calories than you think. This extends to condiments too. Barbecue sauce, honey mustard, and even ketchup can cause you to consume significantly more calories. Homemade smoothies are also a big issue. You're not being healthy by packing your blender to the top full of berries, adding natural organic agave, you know, cause it's healthy and all, and then making a smoothie. Many of my clients have believed this, not realizing that their smoothie contained more sugar and calories than having multiple cans of soda. Another big example is alcohol. Alcohol itself has its own classification of calories. One gram of protein has four calories, carbs also have four calories, fat has nine calories, and alcohol contains seven. Seven completely empty calories per gram of alcohol. Many people that are dieting choose low carb drinks like light beer or even plain vodka, not realizing that the alcohol itself has plenty of its own calories. Just one shot of unflavored vodka has a little under 100 calories. That can easily add up. On top of that, if you get a buzz, are you really gonna count every shot you take or every beer you have? Probably not, and once your inhibitions are lowered, you're more likely to get the munchies, eat a bunch of junk food, and forget to accurately track all of it. Now, if you're sure you're not making any of these mistakes and you're accurately tracking your calories, it may have something to do with your workouts. I've trained clients before that have had such low muscle mass on their bodies that they would have to cut calories so extremely low to be able to burn any amount of fat that it would become simply unsustainable. So sometimes focusing on building some muscle will take priority over burning fat. See, there's a big benefit to building muscle through strength training. First of all, each strength training session where you lift weights and push yourself to lift more will drain the stored glucose found in your liver and your muscles. As you eat, you'll replenish that stored glycogen and then you'll You'll burn it away once again during your next workout. This constant cycle improves insulin sensitivity and allows you to eat more without storing it as fat. This is because lifting weights makes it more difficult to overfill your glycogen gas tank, so to speak, because that glycogen is the primary source of fuel that your body prefers to use for weightlifting activities. And that's good because if you overfill your glycogen tank, the extra glucose will spill over and that'll get stored as fat. Not only will lifting weights burn glucose, but by building more muscle, your body will be able to store more glucose in your muscle cells rather than in your fat cells. Aside from all that, building muscle also increases your metabolism. This is very important because even if you're eating healthy, if you have a very slow metabolism, you're always going to be fighting an uphill battle. So make sure you're incorporating strength training at least three to four times a week. Even though cardio is a fine addition to your workout plan, it's not going to help you build muscle the way that strength training will. I would say strength training in combination with a calorie deficit from your diet is mandatory to burn fat effectively. So those are five of the top reasons that you're gaining fat or not losing fat while seemingly eating healthy. I really hope this video has helped you out. If it has, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you are feeling stuck with what you're doing right now, it can be really beneficial to have a fully mapped out plan that's based on your body and adapts as your body changes and adapts. What worked for you a month ago could very well not be working anymore. This is why you want a constant progression path. So if you want to skip all the trial and error that's typically associated with eating healthy and trying different meal plans, try my free six week shred. It'll provide a super streamlined process that includes full workout programs with a guided video exercise library, a personalized meal plan, a 42 recipe cookbook, and a coach to guide you through the entire process. To get all of that, all you have to do is head on over to my website where we're 
we're currently offering all of this for free as long as you put your best foot forward and simply stick to the plan we create for you for six weeks. To find out more, click the link below in the description or you can head straight on over to my website at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.